The angel of the Lord is Mary. Now Mary, the grace of the Lord is for thee, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. You saints of the Lord is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said? You who unto Jesus for refuge have fled. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all you angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Let us pray. O oh God, who called the bishop St. John Neumann, renowned for his charity and pastoral service to shepherd your people in America, grant by his intercession that as we foster the Christian education of youth and are strengthened by the witness of brotherly love, we may constantly increase the family of your church through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the King 
and with your justice, the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. The mountain shall yield peace for the people and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. By now it was already late, and his disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it's already late. Dismiss them so that they can go to the surrounding farms and villages and buy themselves something to eat. And he said to them in reply, Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Are we to buy 200 days' wages worth of food and give it to them to eat? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five loaves and two fish. So he gave orders to have them sit down in groups on the green grass. And the people took their places in rows of hundreds and fifties. Then taking up the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up twelve wicker baskets full of fragments and, that, and what was left of the fish. Those who ate of the loaves were five thousand men. The Gospel of the Lord. I think this week, if you look at it liturgically, it will be called Hometown Heroes. And, and these three days, we have three American saints back to back to back. Yesterday, as we prayed with Elizabeth Ann Seton, and today is St. John Neumann, the only uh, American bishop to have been canonized. Uh, we're hoping for Fulton Sheen in the near future. And then tomorrow will be Andre Bissette, a, a Canadian saint. And uh, I, I've been to, uh, we, a couple years ago, we did a, a youth uh, pilgrimage up up the uh, up the east coast, and it was so beautiful. We went and saw all these different saints, and I remember coming back. It was like all these saints we saw. We celebrated at mass, and so I got to see his body. And he's a little guy. Saint John Neumann is probably like five one, you know. And actually, one of the things about him is <laughs> the kids used to make fun of him because when he got on the horse, his feet couldn't he hit the stirrups, you know. And uh, they call him the little priest, but they loved him, and he he had a huge impact. So tying in with this gospel, what can we learn from him? Well, notice that Jesus saw a vast crowd, and he was moved with pity, and they were sheep without a shepherd. Well, you know, uh, John Newman was born in the Czech Republic, and in, his, in Europe at the time, there were tons of priests. But in America, there were very few. And so when he was about to get ordained, uh, his bishop says, we don't have room for you. And he's like, well, what am I going to do? He's 25 years old. Well, he actually wasn't ordained yet, but he was about to be ordained. And he's like, well, if I'm not going to ordain, why am I going to do this? So there were some, some kind of letters uh, that went back and forth from the bishop of the United States and the bishop and where he lived, and they said, all right, they'll take you. And so he walked on foot to France, got on a boat, had a dollar in his pocket, and, and uh, sailed to the United States of America. 
gets off the boat, meets the bishop. The bishop ordains him in two months and says, welcome to the United States of America. And lo and behold, they had 36 priests for 200,000 people. Do the math. That's a lot of confessions. <laughs> so he's got 200,000 people for 36 priests. And, and poor John found himself just on horseback day after day, private masses all over the place in houses because they didn't have parishes. And you notice in this gospel today that Jesus breaks them up into hundreds and fifties. What are you talking about there? Parishes. That he, the Lord would say that there will be priests that did particular parishes. And so John Newman spent hours upon hours setting up parishes for the bishop in different spots around the Northeast. And he got so tired and so lonely and so sort of out of breath that he asked that he would, he wanted to kind of, he, want, he just uh, missed being around priests. And so what happened is he kind of asked if he could join a religious order. He was just worn out and he joined the Redemptorist. And he became a Redemptorist priest. You know, the founder of that is St. Alfonso Sigori. And, uh, and lo and behold, he started living community life. He felt his health getting back. He started feeling, not that he was, he was holy, but he started feeling holy again. And then lo and behold, they decide to make poor John a bishop. So, uh, and oddly enough, if you know in Baltimore, St. Alfonso Sigori Parish, which is right near um, the Inner Harbor, uh, he was the pastor there for many years. So this, this particular priest was a pastor right down the street in Baltimore. And you can see relics of him there. Well, what happened from there is that John began to establish uh, Catholic schools. Uh, when he started, there was only two. And by the time, and he was only a bishop for like seven to eight years, and he died uh, at the age of 48 of exhaustion. While he was working, he just kind of felt keeled over and went to heaven. <laughs> Good way to go. Die with your boots on, so to speak. And so he, he passed away, and, it's, and he set up over a hundred schools. Um, and, and, his, and that's why in the opening prayer, we talked about taking care of the youth. He brought a lot of the, the poor kids together for education. So he's just another, just a, an awesome thing. And it just shows us that this little man had, you know, uh, with all kind of meager circumstances and resources, that because he put it on the line, God made this huge miracle. And he took the five loaves and two fish and what? And fed many. And that's for all of us. Many times I think we're overwhelmed with what God has us do, right? And we think, oh, I don't have much to offer. But the Lord says, give me what you got and I'll work a miracle. And so we turn to St. John uh, Newman. We ask him to pray for us. His body is actually in Philadelphia. It's uh, buried underneath an altar, and it actually can be seen by all. You can, I think Bill put it on the, on the, on the, uh, the, the picture of it on the, on the Facebook. And, but it's, it's just amazing. He's just, his body looks so peaceful. Like, it's all over. You know, did my job, and I went to the Lord. And he said this before he died. A man must always be ready for death. For death comes when and where God wills it. And then in between, we do God's will. And so today we turn to St. John Newman and ask our Lord, Lord, where can I take my meager five loaves and two fish and help work a miracle with your grace? St. John Newman. Thank you. And now we stand and bring our petitions to the Lord. We pray for our church. We pray for all pastors and uh, bishops around our country that they may give the sacraments readily to people and teach them the church doctrine. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our government that they enact laws and protect all human life from conception till natural death and also find ways to end this pandemic in an ethical way. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the sick and suffering. Uh, we pray especially for our family and friends that maybe have left the faith or have drifted a bit, that through God's grace and through our um, apostolate, they may return to the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all the holy souls in purgatory, that they may be with our Lord in heaven. We pray to the Lord. And we turn to our Blessed Mother and ask for her powerful intercession as together we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
And we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, with your goodness. We have received the bread we offer and fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness. We have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed God. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, 
and that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command, that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as a mighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Somewhere away when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he sent the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata With gladness, men of old did the guiding star behold. As with joy they hailed its light, 
leading onward, beaming bright. So, most gracious Lord, may we evermore be led to Thee. As with joyful steps they sped to that lowly manger bed, there to bend the knee before Him whose heaven and earth adore. So may we with willing feet ever seek the mercy seat. As they offered gifts most rare at the manger rude and bare, so may we with holy joy, pure and free from sin's alloy, all our costliest treasures bring, Christ to thee, our heavenly King. Holy Jesus, every day, keep us in the narrow way. And when earthly things are past, bring our ransomed soul at last. Where they need no star to guide, where no clouds thy glory Let us pray. 
refreshed by our participation in the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, we ask, O Lord, that by the example of St. John Neumann, we may experience the power of the sacrament and remain constantly in the church by the bond of unity and truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, just a reminder, so tonight we will have uh, the blessing of the holy water. Benediction will be right before uh, 6 o'clock, probably like 5.50. Uh, we'll do benediction. Uh, if you're coming for adoration, we'll end at 6. And then the priests will come. There will be quite a few priests here to, because they all want to get some of this water. And then you can just bring your own personal jugs and to fill up the water if you like. Um, and that right after the blessing. The blessing should take 30 to 40 minutes. It will be in Latin. There's three exorcisms of the water. So this is like high octane holy water. It's really good to bless homes and to bless yourselves with and to have at home, especially in this time where it's really hard to find good holy water. So hopefully this will be great for you. All right. All right. So please kneel for the prayers of exposition. Jesus, be our love. 